But since most of you watching probably know us from the CryptoKitties days, I wanted to give you a quick introduction to Flow and why we built our own blockchain. I'll make it quick, but I think it'll be helpful context for the rest of the sessions. First, our mission at Dapper Labs is and always has been the mainstream adoption of crypto. We've always believed that in order for that to happen, consumers need to understand and feel the benefits of blockchain beyond just trading cryptocurrencies. That's why we started with games and virtual worlds. Especially now in a post-COVID world, the principles of digital ownership, of peer-to-peer -peer networks, of sharing in the value that you help create on digital platforms is more important than ever. And demand for these values will bring about a new wave of applications. The biggest brands in the world agree with us. These are some of the partners we've spoken about publicly, but there's more where that came from. I can tell you that almost every major consumer brand is deeply evaluating the impact of blockchain and how they interact with their customers. We're proud to be part of leading that conversation. Today, you'll hear from Katie Tedman, who's our head of partnerships, on how these conversations have been going and what these groups really care about. But I also wanna make clear, Flow is a platform that we're building our own IP on top of as well. And you can be the first to hear about CryptoKitties on Flow by being part of that community on Ethereum today, starting to share more on that very soon. As you know, there's some major blockers to adoption when it comes to blockchains. The problem of scalability is itself three problems, right? It's speed, cost, and throughput. But the user and developer experience of building on these networks is even more critical in making them a sustainable foundation. When CryptoKitties broke Ethereum, we spoke to all of the folks working on blockchain scalability, um, from Vitalik to Dan Larimer, Silvio, the Polkadot guys, you name it. And we realized that the approaches everybody was taking would make things even worse from a user and developer standpoint. That's why we started working on Flow. This is what people that have gone deep into Flow are saying about it today. And in a sense, because we started from first principles, we've solved a lot of the problems with blockchain that are obvious in retrospect, but still not really well understood by most people who haven't already tried building applications and real businesses on top of the technology. And I wanted to quickly walk through those main categories. First, everybody else is pursuing only one of two approaches when it comes to scaling blockchains. On the one hand, Ethereum and most of, the, most of its competitors are betting everything on sharding. And you know, whether you call it side chains, whether you call it parachains, the upshot is still the same. You're losing atomicity in the execution environment and breaking it up into smaller pieces. On the other hand, projects like Libra, like EOS, they're sometimes temporarily, sometimes permanently giving up on decentralization in order to increase speed and throughput. We think both of these approaches throw a wet blanket on the value of blockchain, especially to developers. On the one hand, sharding makes blockchains much harder to build on and much less composable. On the other, reduced decentralization creates regulatory problems and doesn't get a core community excited to engage in the applications that are built on top. So we created a new architecture for Flow inspired by how modern CPUs work, really dividing up the tasks that go into creating and validating blocks and having four different kinds of nodes each specialized in one part of the process. That means we don't shard the network and we can keep a shared state and asset compliant environment while at the same time having the potential to scale to tens of thousands of nodes and having maximum decentralization. As far as we know, Flow is the only blockchain that works this way, which is why it's taken us two years to validate all of our hypotheses and bring you a platform that you can actually build on. And our product lead, Lane LaFrance, will speak to some of the roadmap we've, we've had to date, as well as what you can expect over the next few weeks. On the programming language front, all of the other projects are either just sticking with Solidity and Ethereum virtual machine, or jumping ahead and trying to adapt WebAssembly for blockchain use cases. Now, Solidity and EVM have served us really well, but there's not a single smart contract developer that's not frustrated with the difficulties and with the limitations that they place on them. And Wasm is amazing, but it's built for the constantly changing and always in flux nature of web applications, not the immutable security that you need when you're writing smart contracts. And so you'll hear about this from Dieter Shirley, who'll do a deep dive today. 
and tell you a little bit about Cadence, the program language we built from scratch, which is getting a lot of adoption in all kinds of different circles. Now we think of Cadence as the fastest, easiest, and safest way to write smart contracts. And Dita will tell you a little bit about why that is. But we didn't stop there. So much of Flow was re-engineered from the ground up so that developers and users don't even have to think about the, the normal friction that you experience on blockchain today. This is one of the main reasons we invited Sean Lee from Fortmatic here. So you can hear it directly from a CEO that's building a business on top of the platform. But you'd also hear from Katie that big brands are pretty sophisticated about this stuff. And we've had to do a lot of work to make sure Flow stays a good foundation where these folks are comfortable building entire businesses on top of. Last, but maybe most important, I want to highlight that although Flow is working with some of the biggest brands in the world, and although we do expect the first wave of users to come from these brands, we are absolutely committed to an open, permissionless, and decentralized future. That means you, the developer community, should get involved early. You can go today, start learning Cadence on the Flow Playground. You can check out the SDKs and the emulator that we've open sourced on GitHub that should let you start building Flow applications immediately. And then jump into Discord so you can start chatting with the rest of the community and start seeing the kinds of things people are building on Flow. Without further ado, thank you for joining us. We've got a great session ahead of you today. I'll pass off to my colleagues to do deep dives and tell you a little bit more about what we've been working on.